Once again, the Spider-Man No Way Home ad campaign is more about what they don't show. But wait a minute, is that a freaking arc reactor? It is! Oh, that's exciting. That's very exciting. And I'm surprised that Electro did not trend this morning with that reveal. The idea that in this, in the universe that this Electro comes from, he's obviously quite different. He, mu he must have worked, Max Dillon must have worked for Stark Industries and not Oscorp as he did in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. That is an awesome change! And I'll be very curious with this change, this application of Stark Tech, allowing Max Dillon to turn into living energy as well as conduct it, will mean for the MCU going forward. Perhaps it will come into play with Ironheart and Armor Wars. Just recently, one of you tweeted me or put a comment on one of my videos saying it's crazy that the Spider-Man movies, even though they are in the MCU, for the most part seem to take place in a vacuum. They never, they never are referenced, it's weird. So this gives me hope that, uh, although it does also cement the Iron Spider situation that I know a number of you don't uh, particularly care for. But I love it. I think it's really great. And this is a great example of how cool multiverse stories can be, a la What If. Maybe in a future episode of What If, they could tell the origins of these, uh, uh, you know, these uh, No Way Home versions of these villains. If, you know, they're, they're willing to do that since they, they, for the most part, still do take place in their own weird space. Now, speaking of not showing things, as I tweeted yesterday, Sony has made the unusual decision to only show about 40 minutes of the movie today to press for the junket, which is where they interview the cast. They don't have to, this is not to review the film, the screenings today. And they interview the cast and behind the scenes talent. Typically, you know, in this case, it would be like John Watts, the director, and then of course, Amy Pascal uh, and Kevin Feige. What crazy stuff will Amy Pascal say today? Hey, you know what? She uses the power of positive thinking to will this stuff into existence. Now, word is, Sony has told some press that the reason they're only showing 40 minutes is because the film's not finished. And I have heard that they are rendering up until the very last minute on this one. And while that while that's unusual, it's not unheard of, and it's not like we haven't seen crappy CGI, not just in movies before, but very successful ones. Uh, so it is weird that they wouldn't um, be willing to show it as is. So I think it's a mix. I think it's a mix of the film not being totally ready to show. I mean, they know that this is under the most possible, you know, tremendous scrutiny for this film, which is going to factor in in another way in a moment. Uh, but I think a clever ad campaign has been born here out of necessity, which could change the way big blockbuster movies are advertised. What a time to be alive! Uh, you're seeing a lot of things change. And, you know, it's kind of, in this case, like, once again, spilling out of the pandemic. And we'll get to the new posters in depth in a minute. Now, where I want to start this conversation is, remember when Disney and Lucasfilm showed the first episode of The Mandalorian to press a few years ago? but left off the last few minutes so that Baby Yoda was a complete surprise to everyone? That was incredible that they pulled that off. And perhaps once the pandemic is over, this is where the pandemic factors in here, VFX work will stop being done at home, at people's homes. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of leaks coming out of that. And also maybe as films become more CGI heavy, as we've been discussing, post-production will start to become better scheduled. And so it won't be done so by the seat of everyone's pants at the last minute, and new vendors won't be rushed in who are not properly vetted and secured. Maybe once that's all fixed, we can go back to the level of secrecy that allowed Grogu to be a complete and total surprise. A lot of the things, well, I think that the Luke thing kind of leaked, right? But, you know, for all the things that Star Wars gets wrong, they, they do, the TV, you know, Filoni and Favreau have done a pretty good job um, keeping things secret. Now, pr uh, pr again, press attending the junket, they don't need to see the whole film. And I hear that the actors who would show up in the part that they're not seeing aren't gonna be participating in the junket anyway, nor will they be at the premiere. Sony is keeping the focus on the trio. When they send out the press releases, they, they don't even list Alfred Molina and Jamie Foxx, even though they're in the trailer and on these new posters. You know, they're, keep, they're focusing on the trio. 
Benny C., who will probably surely participate, although he's busy redoing Doctor Strange too. And I think maybe Alfred Molina and Jamie Foxx might be uh, around because again, they're in the trailer, they're on the posters, because they already blabbed that they're in the movie through the press a while ago. Uh, and Jamie Foxx through his Instagram account. So I think that's one of the reasons that they're being utilized so strongly, whereas other villains are not. Now, recently, speaking of premieres, why they would do this is that a number of movies have ruined surprise appearances with actors showing up to the premiere and or participating in the junket. I think recently the most, the most infamous example of that was Ben Kingsley and Sean Chi. I knew that he was returning, but I didn't want to talk about it yet. I think I felt, and I think a number of other people did as well, that it became fair game once he joined the junket and showed up at the premiere. It's like, why else would he be there? He's in the movie. Now, as for review screenings, the latest rumor is that those screenings will take place around the same time that the movie has that premiere, which is Monday, December 13th. Because, hey, the jig will be up in 24 to 48 hours with the movie hitting theaters overseas already. Will Sony hold anything back at the premiere? Considering what happened at the Eternals premiere, with press straight spoiling, not even teasing certain reveals there, it'll be interesting to see what Sony decides to do there. Uh... I mean, they can't stop screenshots once it hits overseas European theaters. They might feel that December 13th is close enough. I would have even maybe had the premiere on the 15th, when it, the first day that it opens in overseas countries. This is fascinating. It's fascinating about how studios can handle this new spoiler-centric uh, situation that's going on. Now, personally, I think press, tweets, reviews help hype a movie up. Although, Spider-Man No Way Home don't need no hype. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But I think going forward, I see a compromise where NDAs are not only used, but enforced. And I can tell you, all I can say is that some studios are already getting more aggressive on that front since the Eternals premiere. You'd be surprised what we have to sign. All right, so anyway. Now, Spider-Man No Way Home, as I said, don't need no extra hype. Oh, it's doing quite well. That's why it doesn't need any trailers. It doesn't really need any posters. The thing's like pretty much sold out or close to sold out for this opening weekend. You can still get tickets, but you know, they're not gonna be ideal tickets. Anyway, I think part of the reason Sony is, another reason that Sony is holding back characters that, they, that have already leaked that we all know are in the movie is that they don't want the characters to be scrutinized. I mean, Sony, do, I really loved Far From Home in particular. I thought that was a fantastic film. But, you know, Sony is not, well, I mean, even Kevin Feige has recently proven to be fallible. So the Internet's a brutal place, right? So I don't think they want these characters returned to be scrutinized just yet. They're like, we'll get to that. So why run towards it? So I think they're, they're, it's a clever idea to keep everyone guessing and on their toes. Some of you are even sweating as to whether or not they're actually in the movie. They are. But some of you are like going along with Sony. Like Sony's it's working. You're like, maybe they're not. They are. But it's hilarious. I think Sony's keeping everyone in the speculate box rather than allowing us to graduate to critiquing. But we can't critique these new posters. So let's do that. What? No Lizard or Sandman, even though they're kind of in the trailer and poster? Um, I think that Reese Evans and Thomas Hayden Church they have not leaked that they're in the film. I think largely because nobody talks to them. It's rough out there. But I mean, also, Toby McGuire, Andrew Garfield has done a class act job of straight up denying that he's in this movie. So I think that's funny. He'll have some funny stories to tell after the movie's released about, whoo, it was rough, you guys. <laughs> but also, Toby McGuire doesn't actively work anymore. He's been going to parties, but no press have been able to corner him and talk to him about it, which I think is uh, re really interesting. You could write a paper about this whole Spider-Man No Way Home ad campaign situation. But so yeah, Ethan's in Hayden Church, not been, not been, it's not been like confirmed, confirmed, right? We've only seen the CGI versions of them. They could have put the CGI versions in posters, but whatever, when posters just sand. But anyway, um, does it matter about the villains? They don't have six, they don't have enough. The number that we're focusing on is three, as in three Spideys. And uh, with the masks on, the Spideys in the foreground, one can imagine that these villains are facing off the big three. Oh, who's partnering with who? We'll talk about that in just a second, but I do think that that's the whole point of these posters. I think these posters aren't even about the villains because we've already seen them in the trailers. I think it's about the tease of the Spideys once again. Oh, so do you. It only works because they're in the movie. All right, so of course, Andrew Garfield uh, do -si does with Electro. Toby for Doc Ock. They have a bond. They have a bond. Scientist to scientist. And I think that you might be like, well, what about for Green Goblin? That's Tom Holland's villain. He's about to become Tom Holland's number one rogue. Oh, just you wait. 
So for as for the posters themselves, I think they're only medium. I mean, they're obviously they're just basically floating heads. They're obviously not that great. I think it would be better to pull back and give us a better look at them, a really good look at them. But again, Sony doesn't want to give you a good look. They're like, that's enough. Case in point, even though Sony has already revealed Green Goblin's new look in, the tra in a trailer and in a poster, they won't show it up close here. I think that's probably because Willem Dafoe has not confirmed he's in the movie, which he does press. That's a, I guess he hasn't done any press recently. That's interesting. Um, maybe his publicist is really good at being like, don't ask him. So Willem Dafoe, he hasn't, been, he hasn't been confirmed, even though he's totally in the movie, and it's already leaked that he's the main villain. So since we ha still haven't really seen his face, I mean, you can kind of make it out in that poster. Some of you at first thought it was maybe James Franco in the trailer, but in that poster, it's clearly Willem Dafoe. But Sony just will not flat out confirm. They're like, you, are you 100%? Are you 100%? Uh, I mean, we all know 100% he's in the movie, but it's funny. That 0.01 Sony, I think, is able, you know, it's interesting. It's really cool. I'm kind of in awe of it, and I, I, I respect it. I think it's good. And I do like the goblin smoke as well. I think that's a nice effect. Alfred Molina looks oddly not de-aged here. I think he looks much better and cooler in the trailers. And why is he wearing two coats? I hope that this movie solves that mystery. And then as for Jamie Foxx, I wish he had his electricity mask. You know, that I guessed and then was able to confirm before the second trailer came out. It's cool. I would have put it here. But obviously, the reveal of this poster is supposed to be the arc reactor. And yet, it ended up not being a big reveal. He should have had, like, a Stark Industries logo scratched out on his chest, but you could still see part of it. Maybe then people would have been like, ooh. So, and I'm curious, again, to see what they do with that going forward. So, what do you think of the latest developments for Spider-Man No Way Home across the board? Do you have your tickets yet? And if not, why not? I mean, just pick them up. You can pick up a cup. I, I wonder how many, how many pairs of, how many, how many groups of tickets are you holding? And are you going to go each time or will you be returning some of them? Um, I bought several tickets before I settled on where I wanted to see it and when. Uh, so that's interesting. All right. So I guess keep checking back if you can't get the tickets that you want. Uh, you know, still get some, but some others might become available closer to release. All right, share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.